we were just going to go through these problem solving and see what advice we can give uh, for these different problems. Um, so the first one is, it's winter and boy, do I have the balls. I can't get out because the weather has been so bad and it's so gloomy. I'm getting depressed and all I want to do is eat. What can I do? And you know, that's happened just not during the, during the winter time, but it uh, it's happened all last year. And I've heard of several people gaining a lot of weight during the pandemic because they didn't get out. So what advice can we give them um, if all they want to do is eat? I say do what Irene does and walk around the house, but maybe first call a, call a friend. Isn't that a, isn't that a, a TV show contest where you, got, you get to call a friend? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Or um, find something to do with your hands to not get bored. Yeah. Don't sit there and watch TV and think about, you know, what your next, where your next meal is coming from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Turn off the food shows, you know, the, the, the shows the that come on shows. Where you, the cooking shows, you know, turn that off. Uh, make sure you just got healthy food in the house, leave the sweets and the stuff out. I mean, those are all things that, you know, you can do, you know, so yeah. Okay, let's skip down, let's see. I've been coming to TOPS meeting for six years and I recently found out, found an old membership receipt and I discovered that I have only lost five pounds since I started six years ago. I think I have been using TOPS to keep me from gaining weight and not to lose my excess weight. What's wrong with me? <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna really just tell you how I really, really feel. <laughs> what you been doing? What have you been doing that <laughs> you've only lost five pounds in six years? You know, <laughs> that's funny. Well, that's funny. look, I have got this. But I do now. understand. I Wait. do understand. Yeah, but I started in 96, and it took me from that to, to well, you know, let's see, I, I got down to 145, and then I got the thyroid stuff because I didn't think I gave up trying to lose weight eat better, exercise, because I figure, look at all these skinny people running around. It don't matter anyway. And then I got sick as a dog, got the virus, which affected my thyroid, the Hashimoto's and all that good deal. So then I went all the way up to high, and then I had to work back down. So I'd say, ain't nothing wrong with her. Just don't give up. But the sad thing is, is that she had to discover what her weight was from a piece of paper she found. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Right her, like, look That's at your stuff true. on tops, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying. I'm just saying. Tell, yeah. yeah. Encourage them to look at that, at the weight chart. Look at their own personal stuff. Own chart mm -hmm. At the beginning of the year. And what are you doing to, since the beginning of the year, too? Yeah. And those charts are supposed to have your highest weight on there as well. That's right. Uh, I, I can relate to this because I joined in 96 as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I have, from, from, my, from my starting weight, I think I have lost like 11 pounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm taking it slow, you know, two pounds a year. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, sometimes it's just got to click. But, you know, if you're not going, um that accountability is gone. Yeah. So, you know, to me, if you're not gaining weight, if you're maintaining or, you know, just playing around with the weight, at least you're not making it any worse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I really do believe that saying that if I wasn't going, I'd be worse than what I am now. And that's really the truth for me. I can't say that for everybody, but for me it is. Well, I have, my sister is uh, one of those people because she lost like 97 pounds or something wow. when she was going. And then she quit because she was, she, she, we talked about this this weekend. She was gaining just a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. And she was slowly gaining that weight back. So she quit going at all. Mm -hmm. Well, now she's gained that 97 plus probably another 50. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know, not going is it's worse. Is worse, I think. But yeah. you know, 
I have a cops that's that's been in tops for 40 years and she's registered first time as cops this year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just got to click. You just got to find something that's going to make it click. Mm -hmm. I have a, I only have one sibling, one sister, and we look a lot alike. Only she has diabetes. I do not. It's a choices. And she weighs, she weighs about, 50 pounds more than I do. And she's like 13 years younger than I am. Yeah. I mean, she's lost some now and she's getting her diabetes in control. But I'm, I'm not saying that because I'm better than her. Mm -mm. But I'm saying that because my, I, I saw it in our family and I saw the choices. <laughs> and my mom would go get, she'd go uh, buy fat-free, sugar-free, Mama, and diet sodas, geez, because that, that was, those were new things around when she was, she was trying to lose weight, and my sister, my sister never did like to eat her veggies and stuff, now I think she's better, because she's got grandkids, but uh, it, there are choices, yeah, our choices, um, our diabetes can be like a a person that weigh 90 pounds as well. That's and true. How our pancreas process uh, stuff. I mean, it has a whole lot. And that's why um, that is one of the things that I've always disagreed with TOPS is that I know it's take off the pounds sensibly, mm -hmm. but we should really focus a whole lot more than we do on just health, getting health. healthy, Definitely. getting healthy, because a lot of us are so unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do believe that once we get healthy, we will start losing the weight. I honestly oh. do believe that. Oh, yeah. you can be skinny fat. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can be skinny and still have still have all choices. Those other things. That is correct. That is correct. So it is. It is. It is hard. But uh, once again, that if we don't do something, we have to do something. We just can't keep on you know, doing what we're doing. And for me, this has been a wake up call because when you think about all the things that they told you, if you have this, if you have that, you're more susceptible to this COVID, you know, that's a wake up call. Yeah, That's a wake up call for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping. All right. Um, so I've lost my excess weight and have reached my goal weight. My enthusiasm is dwindling though. Watching the weight roll off was more fun than simply preventing weight gain. <laughs> Besides, maintenance is unglamorous. How mm -hmm. can I keep my enthusiasm? Wow, help somebody else. Yeah. Help somebody else. Help somebody else reach the goal. I think that happens to a lot of new cops mm -hmm. because, you know, they they watch they watch those numbers go down and they get all this recognition, but all of a sudden, you know, they are maintaining and a lot of contests and a lot of programs and stuff like that are not made for cops. Yeah, that's true. And um, I, I think they, I think they feel like they get less support from the mm -hmm. other members and mm -hmm. they, and I guess they take it upon themselves to support other people so they can keep that enthusiasm for tops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why that's, if that's, if that's the reason a lot of new cops quit once mm -hmm. they reach their goal. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's why they quit. Wow. I don't know. Just to Ooh, That's worth the conversation. Yeah. Yep. It's not, it's not unglamorous to me because I still have a hard time in my, in within my uh, leeway stuff. I sure yeah. much rather be seven pounds under than hovering around where I am. So that's my my goal is to just get a little bit more under so it's not so tenuous right uh, and then i look uh, at the our other ladies in the group and again it's choices yep yeah. all right so when i get home from work at 5 30 i am so stressed tired and hungry that i can't imagine planning and cooking a healthy dinner I grab the only thing available to eat, and that's usually high-carb finger foods to tide me over. What can I do to change this routine? Yeah. Well, years that ago... That would be me. <laughs> yeah. 
years ago, what I did is uh, on uh, Sundays, I would fix our meals for the week and then freeze them. Okay. So I would do, like I make maybe two different kinds of meat. And of course my favorite go-to was chicken or either uh, uh, ground beef, uh, you know, and uh, I would make uh, like maybe a lasagna or uh, from the lasagna I would, or I would make a uh, meatloaf. So that's two different kinds of meal. That's two meals there. Uh, or I do chicken, I uh, bake a chicken. So now part of the chicken we're gonna eat baked, the other part we're gonna make into a chicken salad. And so there was meats for all of that. And then on Sunday, I do it all over again, a different thing. And that's how, that's actually how I got started with that because I just didn't have the time. I actually work 14 hours a day. Yeah. So it was tough. Oh, was I imagine. Really I imagine. And you know, I, I have six people in the house that I usually cook for in the evening. So that would be a lot of cooking on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, I have, I have done it you know, make casseroles or um, like chicken pot pie or, pe you know, pizzas or stuff like that and froze them. So it can be done. They say um, uh, a nutritionist is with, with, with this doctor. She says when you cook something, cook it so it could be used for three meals. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying with the 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 ground meat could be lasagna, the meatloaf, whatever. Mm -hmm. Other thing is, choose you some nutritious snacks or something mm -hmm. to eat on your way home. That so you won't be so damaged. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's uh, I don't know, popcorn mm -hmm. before you've done gone home or uh, um, uh, nuts. Yeah. I got these little nuts in the bags now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The healthy nuts. And Rhonda, go back down to that, that last one. Uh, right here? Yeah, she's tired and hungry. So, yeah, okay. I so, just wanted to know if she was saying hungry or just tired. Okay. Yeah, so when I got home, when I got home this afternoon, I knew it was going to be a while before I got to cook. So, I actually had a um, one of the yogurt smoothies. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like 130 calories for the bottle. Mm -hmm. Um and it'll it'll do me till I get to where we can eat, mm. or and we'll I'll just cook something light. Oh, no. my mother's coming. My mother-in-law, she the six kids, each kid except for the baby, he got away with it. They had <laughs> to um, choose the day of the week, and they were responsible for cooking that day of the week. Mm. And they learned. And my husband's a good cook, and all of his uh, siblings are good except for the youngest one. Um, so they said that he can't even, he didn't even know how you open a peanut butter jar. Oh my mm. goodness. <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm so sure that's an exaggeration, but anyway, but the others, the others are good cooks. Sometimes I would like, uh, uh, put in the oven and roast two chickens, two full chickens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, the meal for the whole week had chicken in it, but it was just made a different way, you know, so right. different. and so, uh, just a lot of things that we, we can do to help ourselves because you're tired you know um, yeah. we, we have a, a no. we have no. a soup night you know especially yeah. in the fall or the winter it's a soup night you know we have chili night you know we have some beans but some meat in it you know so just a whole lot of things but I always recommend that to people especially young people that are working because you have it's such a long day and you are tired you know, or, or at least know what you're going to cook yeah. so you don't have to come home and think about it. And yeah. there's so many modern, modern conveniences now, mm -hmm. you know, you got you know, all these appliances that mm -hmm. you can just put food in them and just they're cook They cook in half the time. That's right. You know, That's and right. um, there's so many pre-prepared meals that you, that you can get. They're not always the healthiest, but um, you know, they, there's so much more, that you don't have to spend all day preparing. You just have to know what you're going to cook. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, my family sabotages my food plan by bringing food high in fat and sugar into the home. They don't seem to take my desire to lose weight and eating healthy seriously. What can I do? 
I can, I can answer this one because I have said, and, and most overweight people have, I have said, I'm going on a diet, I'm going to lose weight. And then all of a sudden you start eating your regular foods again, or you start snacking when, when there's food, you know, high fat and sugary food in the house. And it doesn't help when your husband comes and throws a little Debbie on your on your uh, table right in front Stop of it. you. <laughs> so you know, I I can uh, I can understand this feeling. Um, well, and, Valerie, violence is not the answer. <laughs> Man, no, but it sure no, would be <laughs> shifting. <laughs> it we it is now. I just give it to my grandson. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. He. Right now he's doing good, but he's a big fruit and vegetable eater. He'd rather, you know, he'd rather have an apple than a piece of chocolate. Yay. So if he's, you know, and he'll he'll look at his mom and she'll be drinking a coke, and he's like, "That's not healthy." Oh. <laughs> Very That's good. good. That's good. Yeah. So I think we've all been talking about it so much till he's picked up on a lot of things. Uh -huh. But um, uh -huh. but he does. I mean, he does like his sweet snacks, but. Um, yeah, it's it's bad when you know when a, other people in the house have it, knowing that mm -hmm. you are um, that that you have an addiction, mm -hmm. you know, because that's exactly what it is. That's why you eat all that stuff because you're addicted to it. Mm -hmm. But you but, know, but too, they also tops has taught us about there be people that sabotage it. They will some yeah. some will sabotage it on purpose, and then others, you know. Well, hey, I didn't know. You right. Know, uh, right. What's next? I think probably for me, the best thing was to do for because there's only two of us in the household is I just didn't buy it. He never yeah. did buy it. So it wasn't an issue. So it was right. me. So you don't buy it. So that means whatever I'm going to have that has sugar in it, I'm making it from scratch. Yeah. You know, and then I don't I don't even buy sugar. You know, uh, I use coconut sugar. So that's not true. I buy coconut sugar. But uh, that that's more like your that looks like your brown sugar but it's coconut sugar. So, um, you, you know, you just have to find a way to do it. I don't expect for people to change because I had to change, but all I have to do is start thinking about uh, some of the uh, diseases and problems that people, that we can have mm -hmm. because we do eat so many sweets and we do, what's the name? I'm addicted to the point is that I can't just eat one. Right. So if it's That's a bag right. of 2000 cookies there, I need to eat them 2,000 cookies. <laughs> it just makes sense. You know? Because it might not be there when you that's come right. back to it. That's right. That's yeah, right. That, that's me. Uh, you know, it's, uh, that's definitely me. And I find myself doing that. And it's just, you know, it's the, again, it comes down to the choices that you make, mm -hmm. you know, that whether you want to be sick or, you know, do you want a five minute, high you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we um we we would we try to have our when our grown-up kids come over we try to have a healthy menu but then they'll they'll um bring their chips and sodas and all so but now they know that when you or you, the sweets and you leave and you take them with you or well we throw them away mm -hmm. and um uh they don't they don't they can't stay here. Mm -hmm. So it's taken a while, but they they know that now. See with my family, yeah. when they come to visit, the rule that we have is one, you you take off your shoes or you cover your your shoes with, you know, the thing. And uh, if you uh, do sweets, uh, they have to be kept out of sight. So it's best that you don't bring them. Oh, that's good that's idea. how addicted I am. Sorry. You know, and I'm I'm if I don't if I yeah. don't it, I'm okay. And the, the thing about that is that it's amazing because when I go out and I'm at someone else's house, I don't want their sweets. But it's like you bring it in my house, I'm supposed to eat it. That's <laughs> yeah. right. I have told my husband certain granola bars or stuff that, that he can eat that I can't say, can you take this and hide it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I have done that before too. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the family sabotaging your food plan, again, how much desire do you have to stay on that healthy plan? Yeah. Are you really serious about it? If yeah. you are, it doesn't matter what they bring in, you're not going to eat it. That's true. That's true. So, 
Um, but you know, we're always, I think, I think probably for the rest of our lives, we will always be, I'm just going to have a little bit. I can't have a little I'm bit. I'm going to treat myself. We treat ourselves. <laughs> I'm just going to treat myself, you know? I mean, that's how I yeah. was with those cakes and stuff that I would mm -hmm. buy, you know? I'm just yeah. going to have a little bit. And then the next thing you look up, the whole cake, you've eaten the whole cake. Because yeah. nobody else is there to eat them. That's right. Or nobody else wants it. So you have, you feel like you have to eat it because you bought it. Mm -hmm. Today's, um, Today's Danny's birthday, so I invited the kids over yesterday, for, and I made a peach cobbler, and I bought some dairy, a small thing of dairy-free ice cream to go with it, mm -hmm. and so the peach cobbler was gone, because I started with the I, oldest and went to the youngest, and served, and I served, and then, um, but there actually is ice cream left, mm -hmm. so I have to forget about that, and uh, but um, the, but the, there's no cake sitting around, and there wasn't. Uh, I knew what was in it, and it was gluten free, and it didn't add a bunch of sugar to it. And I couldn't get fresh strawberry uh, peaches, and I couldn't find the frozen had peaches had other stuff, other fruit in it, which I didn't know how much was one, how much was the other. And these were organic -y things coming out of the can. So this did the, the because Tanny likes peach cobbler because his grandmother made it. For, they had a peach tree in the backyard. So I know it wasn't like his grandmother's, but mm -hmm. it was the yeah. thought that counts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. None of that peach cobbler sitting around. Yeah. Yeah. But there again, with all of these, it still comes down to our own choices. Yeah, it does. All right. Um, so here's one about plateauing. I've been losing weight each week and I have lost 20 pounds altogether. I'm doing the same thing now, but I can't seem to lose any more weight. What do I do? What do I have to do to get off this plateau? Got to do something different. That's really it. I have that same issue. So I know, you know, um, we just have to do something different. It worked before. And, and also it has a lot to do with age too, because yeah. Um, uh, you, you're going into uh, menopausal or premenopausal or whatever, so it has a lot of different things. Right. Just depends on you know um, what uh, each person is, but it happens. I, I I would say change what you're doing. You know, uh, add more more of whatever the exercise you're doing, or you know, unless you're going to cut your calories, uh, because that's how you lose weight. Is you've got to reduce. You know burn 3,500 calories in order to lose a pound. Right. But, so you if you're, but if your set point is telling you, telling your body that you're starving because you're not eating enough, Correct. then That's you're not going to too. So, so, uh, to, so uh, analyze that part too. Yeah. So yeah. You, have, you just have to adjust the calories to, to, for your body. I know that if, if I eat late at night, not good I so I try not to I, I mean this is uh finally we we ate before tonight but I know that uh if I don't eat late or if I eat real minimal I'll I'll it'll be better it'll be good mm -hmm. so I try to mm -hmm. to not eat late at night that really makes a difference to me yeah it does normally uh my our cutoff is like don't don't eat after seven, but on Mondays, it's don't eat after eight thirty because this is going on. I'm here, mm -hmm. so that's the thing. And then uh, tonight, it's like I won't get any food until after this next meeting is over that I have. <laughs> so that's the that's the thing. So that means you're up. What's well, I mean, it, it takes at least three hours for you to start digesting that food, you know. And so then you go in there and you lay down, you know, and you got all this food just sitting around, you know. So um, what's the name? But uh, yeah, those are some good ones, Rhonda. All right. Um, well, this handout is put out um, on, on Facebook and it's also on the um, TOPS website mm -hmm. um, under the Leaders Corner. So okay. um, th these are really good discussion questions for a meeting. Um, and I appreciate y'all's input and appreciate y'all joining.